Father, God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we are not, thank you that, that we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. So therefore, help us to keep up, help us to be careful, sober-minded, vigilant, and watchful. To help everybody to pay attention and to be alert and to be on point and help us all to do our job for your glory, your praise and honor, for your kingdom. Rebuke and bind the devil and his demons and his hosts from the minds and hearts of the people who are gathering on with us and from us. Uh, place upon us the whole arm of God. Surround us with the band of your holy angels. In Jesus Christ's name we pray for a Savior. Amen and amen. Let's all reading of God's holy word. How to overcome temptation, part 145. And today we're dealing with how to overcome the temptation uh, to be proud and to be arrogant. In the Onward Christian Soldiers Discipleship Class number 269. Uh, please turn with me to our base verse. Pass me that Bible, please. I had it over here. I had it over here early. Earlier. Our foundational verse for this whole series, and yes, it is a rather long series, because you will be tempted, contrary to our prosperity gospel preaching preachers and the so-called now gospel preachers, you will be tempted for the rest of your life. I don't care how old you get. You should be able to resist the temptation better as you get older, but you will be tempted. So don't listen to these lying people who tell you, oh, I'm not tempted with anything. I'm not bothered by that. We're giving the devil too much credit and all this foolishness. Uh, it reminds me of, of the boxer in the boxing ring. Boxing ring. He kept going to his corner and his uh, coach kept telling him they're not he's not laying a hand on you he's not laying a hand on you he had cuts and bruises all over his face and blood was trickling down and he would he went back to his corner a third time and the coach said he's not laying a hand on you he's not laying a hand on you then he looked up at his coach, bleeding, and one eye half closed. He said, well, somebody better check that reverie because somebody's beating the snot out of me. And uh, you have an enemy, too. His name is the devil. And uh, he's going to fight you until the day you die. You can rest assured, even though he's invisible. Our... Uh, foundational verse is there hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it then I want you to turn in your Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 3 to 5. Verses 3 through 5. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. The Holy Bible reads, Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, 
and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren hath borne seven, and she that hath many children is waxed feeble. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. And we thank you for bestowing all of that upon us. And we have no reason to be proud and arrogant in any way. And so, Lord, help everybody to understand that today. And Holy Father God, we individually, as your people, confess our sin of pharaohistic style and pride, which is a destructive pride, pride itself, arrogancy stubbornness and rebelliousness, uh, thinking we know it all. This is, these are other forms of pride. And Lord, help us to confess our sins and help us to repent of our sins of pride in whatever form it has taken. Have mercy, continued mercy and grace upon us. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins of pride and arrogancy and all other sins. Crush and crucify, Lord, our flesh and the old man within us, afresh and anew. Fill us with the fullness and the power, the unction and the anointing, the fruit and the liberty, Lord, of your Holy Spirit. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our hearts from your Holy Word. Demonstrate the power of your Holy Spirit and uh, rebuke and bind our enemy the devil and his demons, Lord, from this time together, and uh, rebuke and bind the spirit of Judas and the demonic spirit of Sanballat and Tobias as well. Cast that spirit out altogether and fill us all who name the name of Christ with the fullness and the power of your Holy Spirit. And in the end, Lord, we pray that Christians would be encouraged and revived people who don't know your Savior would be born again through the hearing of the gospel by the power of your Holy Spirit glorify your holy name lift up your holy son the Lord Jesus Christ for it is in his name we pray amen you may be seated Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, Dr. Harry Ironside said, pride is a barrier to all progress. Pride is barrier to all spiritual progress. And not only that, ladies and gentlemen, pride is a barrier to your blessings in life. Hear me well. One of the things that parents don't understand about children today is that if they're proud and arrogant, you can't teach them anything. Have you learned that? Have you learned that about people in your employ who work for you? If they come to the job proud and arrogant, 
you can't teach them anything. These people who say, I know, I know, I know, and they don't know anything. Pride is a barrier to everything in your life. And you will not succeed in life with pride. You will always fail. You will always fall flat on your face if you have one ounce of pride in you, arrogancy, thinking that you know everything more even than God and everybody else. Many, many millions of lives have been ruined, wasted, and destroyed because of pride. Hear me and hear me well, people. I can't take the pride from you. I can't give you humility. But I know somebody who can. Marriages have been destroyed. I refuse to apologize. I refuse to humble myself and admit that I'm wrong. Get to the point where you die to yourself and you don't have to be right all of the time. Humble yourself down. Shake your head instead of shaking your head to deny something. Shake your head and say, you know what, I'm just wrong. Can you can you make yourself that, say that? There are some people who can't make themselves say, I'm, I'm just wrong. I messed up. I screwed up. I lied. I cheated. I was dishonest. I did something wrong. I did something. They will go through their lives because of their stinking. Some, in some cases, Pharisee style, uh, not Pharisee, uh, uh, Pharaohistic pride. See, Pharaohistic pride is the kind of pride that you end up dying with and going to hell with. Because you, you, instead of humbling yourself, you'd rather get drowned in the sea like Pharaoh, which is stupid. See, pride makes you stupid. Do you hear me? You, what's so, what's so sad about pride? You think you are important, but pride makes you look very, very unimportant and very stupid. Seriously. And we see this happening across the spectrum in our society today, in politics, in churches, uh, uh, in uh, the world. People looking very stupid because of their pride won't admit wrong and evil. Won't acknowledge that they have done evil and, and wrong. Won't admit that they messed up. We all mess up from time to time. We all fail. We all make mistakes. We all make the wrong decision from time to time. Be humble and stop being proud when you can't even admit you messed up. This is a big part we have a, of a, this is a big part of us in America having a high divorce rate. Families are being destroyed because we have proud, selfish husbands and proud, selfish wives. Then the children become prideful from their pri uh, pride, and, and nobody can tell. You can't tell your child anything and nobody else, and that's why they're just as dumb. Listen to me. They're just as dumb as they can be. You know why? Because of their stinking pride. They won't listen to you. There are children who, if you sit down and try to read the book with them, they won't even listen to you. They'll turn their head to the right. Mm -hmm. And won't even listen. Won't even listen. Won't even read the book with you. Be mad as the devil because you're trying to read the book with them. Trying to help them. They won't even read it. If you're reading from your computer, they're reading from their computer. Uh, they're over there listening to and looking at uh, uh, K-I-S-S, -S, KISS. 
or the man who cut off a pigeon's head while you're trying to read about how God made the pigeon, how God created everything. And they're looking at something else while you're trying to teach them. You know why? Because they think they know everything. And then here's how you know they don't know anything. Ask them a question <clears throat> regarding common knowledge that if you have common knowledge, that means you have been educated. One of the gifts one man gave the world some years ago was a book that we bought when it came out. Uh, it dealt with the things that everybody ought to know if you're living in this world. And it was like a dictionary of everything that, if you're an educated person, that you ought to know. Ask them one of those questions. I don't know. You know why they don't know? Because they're proud and stubborn. Your child is always failing out of college or failing out of school. They're proud. They won't listen. They think they know everything. They think they know every more than you. But if they knew everything, they wouldn't be failing out of college or failing out of high school. They're arrogant. They're proud. They won't listen, which makes them dumb. See, that's what makes you dumb. Pride makes you dumb and look dumb. You need to humble yourself down so that you can learn, so that you can make progress. You will not progress in this life. You will not succeed in this life unless you go down. Humble yourself. Stop being proud and arrogant. God can't, listen to me. Bless your heart. God can't even help you if you're proud and arrogant. Your parents can't help you. Listen to me. There are people that people in authority over you, college professors, teachers, high school teachers, parents, Sunday school teachers, pastors, bosses, once they find out that you are proud and arrogant and you won't listen and you always come back with, this foolishness, I know, I know, or have an attitude and a spirit like, I know, I know, you can't tell me anything. You know what they do? They leave you alone. You know why? Because there's nothing else to do but to leave you to your foolishness and let you keep on destroying yourself. We have this in churches. We have it in the government. We have it uh, in the world, and we have it in families. There are people, once they find out you think you know everything and you're proud and you're arrogant, they're just going to leave you alone. They're not going to try to help you anymore. Not because they don't love you. Not because they don't want to help you. They do want to help you. But they have already seen that you will not listen. You will not be helped. This is why so many people die and go to hell. Because they don't understand that they are lost and they need salvation. That they have failed utterly and they need Jesus. They will not admit. Thank God for the police officer who said, I don't kneel to anybody but God. They won't kneel to God because they think they're God. You got people like this. How many of you right now, out of the thousands who are listening to me right now, how many of you? You're dealing with somebody right now. You love them. They're smart. They're intelligent. But they're proud, and you have tried to help them. They fail all the time. You tried to help them, and you've gotten to the point where you say, you know what, I'm going to have to turn you over to God and leave you to yourself because I can't help you. Hopefully God can. But there are some people so proud, God can't even help them. God won't even, God won't help, he won't help them. He won't. He can't help anybody who's prideful. 
arrogant, which leads to what? Stubbornness, rebelliousness, which leads to what? Witchcraft. You're living a life of witchcraft when you think you know everything. Nobody can tell you anything. Somebody tries to help you. You won't even look at them. You're so stinking proud. Somebody tries to help you get a job. Somebody tries to help you get your education. You won't even look at them. You got a nat. And I know, not only that, watch this. See, 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 you can recognize these jokers who are proud real quick. They have a nasty attitude. They have a proud, stubborn attitude and spirit. <clears throat> they live a dark and wicked and evil life on the inside. They got mess going on in their heads. The devil is messing, uh, messing with them in their heads, making them proud and arrogant. You know who's, uh, who is the master of being proud? The devil. He, he's the originator of pride. He was so proud and arrogant. God made him so wonderful and gifted and beautiful. And, and these are they who oftentimes are the most proud and arrogant. They're, they're gifted. They're beautiful. They got it going on. They have some smarts about them. They can figure out things. Uh, and then they get proud and arrogant. Don't bow your head yet. It's not time to pray. It's not time to pray. Don't bow your head yet. It's not time to pray. Mm -hmm. They're gifted. They're smart. And they know they're smart. And, and, and you have probably told them that they were smart and they went to their head. Oh, how many saints have been destroyed when somebody tried to encourage them and, and said nice things about their gifts and talents and they went to their head and they got weary and well-doing. Mm-hmm. Some of the best people have been taken down by pride because they have been patted on the back and told that they were smart and you can grasp this, you can get this done. And then they believe their own press. They believe their own press. Put it down. They believe their own press. And they fall right flat on their face. You know why they fall on their face? God is going to cause them to fall on their face and allow them, rather, to fall on their face because they have not learned the, most, the, the simplest lesson about being a child of God. You must be humble and not proud. Some, like I told you, have that uh, pharaohistic pride which destroys them all of their lives. They even get to the point where they have to admit that they wasted their lives. They have to, but, but refuse to repent of their pride. So, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible Knowledge Commentary says regarding this passage, through his attributes such as holiness, strength, knowledge, and discernment, and in view of his actions toward both the ungodly and the godly, the Lord demonstrates his awesome sovereignty in human affairs. Especially pointed is Hannah's reference to herself and Penina respectively. In this passage, she who was barren has borne seven children, but she who has had many sons pines away or gets weaker. Hannah eventually had five other children, and the expression seven children here symbolizes the full granting of her desire for a son. The breaking of the bow, satisfying of the hungry, raising of the dead, and elevating of the poor refer to the principle that the final disposition of all things is in the hand of the Lord. And this is why Hannah pointed out, don't be proud, don't be arrogant, because in the end, is up to the Lord.
And that's a lesson for everybody to remember. Stop being proud and stop being arrogant. Stop looking down your nose at other people. Because ultimately, success and victory and an accomplished life is in the Lord's hand. God can do it. Depend on God. Trust in God. He who created the world was able to cause Hannah to triumph over the proud and arrogant Penina. You don't have to defend yourself, people. You don't have to always see. See, watch this now. Listen to me very carefully. If you're finding yourself in your family, in your school, in your church, <clears throat> always busy trying to defend yourself, trying to clarify something all the time, trying to make your point, trying to get your point across, trying to get your little two cents in. That's why they call it two cents, because that's all it's worth with your proud self. You think it's worth a million dollars what you got to say. That's why you're always running off at the mouth. And you don't know. Listen to me. This is going to be a double negative, but I feel like saying it. You don't know nothing. Your proud self. But you think you know. And you don't know anything, child of God, if you are a child of God. Hear me well. If you always got to run off at the mouth, you always got to respond to something. You always got to put your two cents in it. You always got to give pe people a piece of your little mind. Because proud people have little minds. Little. They're little people. They have a spiritual Napoleonic uh, 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 complex. <clears throat> they always have to exert themselves. And show themselves and show how mean and hateful they can be. Always want to get back at somebody. Proud as the devil. Won't listen. And can't even. So proud and so arrogant. They're blinded to the fact that their lives are being destroyed. While the person that they're criticizing. The person that <clears throat> they hate so much is climbing higher and higher and higher. They don't understand it. They can't stand it. They don't know how it's being done. <clears throat> they don't understand the fact that God lifts up one and puts down another, that God is the one who raises up people. But they must be humble. If you're not humble in the home, God's not going to raise you up in the church. I know you think that, but that's not, that's not how it works. If you're not humble in the church, God's not going to raise you up in the world. If you're not faithful in a few things, God's not going to give you much, you hypocrite. You proud devil. And that's what you are. You're proud as the devil, mean as the devil. And see, these people are cantankerous. And watch this. They get up mad because they're full of the devil. They're full of the spirit of pride. They go to bed mad as the devil. They wake up, man. They go throughout the whole day. I feel sorry for people like this. And you can't help them. All you can do is pray for them and encourage them to pray for themselves. And you know what these arrogant, proud people would do when you tell them to pray for themselves? Mm -hmm. I, don't need, I, don't need, I don't need any prayer. That's the attitude of spirit. Proud as the devil. Hateful as the devil. Arrogant. Rebellious, stubborn, mean. It all goes together. Practicing witchcraft. Disobedient. And so, all you can do for a proud person in your life, and uh, for yourself, if you're that person, is pray. And ask God to work on them and break them and make them and mold.
bow them to be. And God may have to break them down to the ground, to the dust. And and even at that point, you better pray that, they, that God, that they can raise, rise back up. Because some people are so stinking proud, even when they're ground down like a, uh, in a pestle, like a pharmacist, and they're ground to powder. You will still see some powder in their prowess trying to lift itself up. They're down in the dust. They're down in the dirt. God has broken them down to the ground, to their knees, and they refuse. To repent. They re- they refuse to humble themselves and stop being proud. And listen to me very carefully. I believe this is the chief reason why so many people go to hell. They're raising their fists up to God and, and telling God that I'm not going to humble down. I'm not going to bow down. We have many people like that today in every area of life. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm just in the introduction part of this sermon. I haven't even touched the main body of it, and I will not today. Since there's so many proud people on their way to a devil's hell, let me talk to you. If you are with us today, and uh, if you were to die today, and you're not sure where you would go, heaven or hell, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and the free pardon of your sins, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today. First, understand that you are a sinner as I am a sinner. We all, you need to humble yourself down and admit. You say, preacher, why do you always bring up that we're sinners? Because people are so proud. There are people who think they're not sinners. There are people in the church who think they're not sinners. They think they they some kind of angel on earth or something. And that's not the case. The Bible says we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And these Proud people don't want to be put in the same boat as everybody else. They think they're special. No. From the Pope on down, from the Dalai Lama on down, from Joel Osteen on down, from T.D. Jakes on down, we all have sinned against God, and we all have disappointed God, and we all have failed God. We're all in the same boat. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. And nothing can humble you down like death. You're done. Death means you're done here on this earth. And if you don't trust Christ as Savior, your body will go to a grave. You may or may not have anybody there to mourn you, depending on how proud and arrogant you were. But your soul will go to eternal death in that awful place called hell. To burn forever. Forever and ever is eternal death, eternal separation from God. And you say, well, preacher, uh, do the proud stay proud in hell? Yes, they do. That's why it is for eternity. There are people in hell who still don't believe they deserve to be in hell. See, see, God can't even help you when you don't understand that. No preacher can help you. I, I know you don't like it, but... Uh, Right now, you don't see. Right now, I'm talking to you, and you're religious. You go to church, but you do what you want to do in your pride and your arrogance, even in the midst of a plague. And you don't think you deserve to go to hell. I don't care if you are saved or lost. I hope you understand. You deserve to go to hell. Uh, we all deserve to die and go to hell and burn forever including myself. 
And I, I, re, I tell the Lord that often. I know that. And you need to know that real good deep down in your heart. And hell is a very real place. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than anybody else in the world, than anybody in the Bible, all of the prophets. Jesus Christ preached more on hell, sad to say, than most preachers have in the past 100 to 200 years. <clears throat> Jesus Christ preached on hell one time and said it was better for you to cut off your hand and your foot and go to heaven than to go to hell with both feet and both hands. That's how bad hell is. He said hell uh, is a place where the worm dieth not. And the body and the uh, fire is not quenched. Hell is a place, he said, of it is a place of weeping and wailing and grinding of the teeth. See, you're so proud, you don't believe that. You don't believe that, see, because you think you're smarter than Jesus. Now, Jesus created the world, but you think you're smarter than He is. Oh, surely there can't be no hell. God would never, Jesus, God is so loving, Jesus so loving, they would never. Here you evil as hell and on your way to hell. And here's, listen to how you're talking. God, I, I know God, and God is so loving. Jesus is so loving. They'll never cast anybody into hell. See, see, you, you're, you're, you're proud and you're arrogant and you're foolish acting. I'm telling you that to your face. You're proud, you're arrogant, and you're foolish acting because you don't know God like that. You don't know Jesus like that. Jesus is not joking. He meant what he said and said what he meant. And by the way, God does not send anybody to hell. They go to hell on their own. God has done everything he could do to save them from hell, including you. For Jesus said in John 3.16, for God so loved the world. Now look at you! Look at you with your proud self. Yeah, see, that's that's the right. That's the God I know. I said Jesus said, "For God so loved the world." This is the same Jesus that I just quoted a few minutes ago, who described how bad hell was, or is. You refused in your pride to believe what Jesus said about hell, but but when when the Bible says that Jesus said, "For God so loved the world," you love that. For yeah, I, I agree with that. Well, who are you? You're, you're proud and you're arrogant. You think that you can put God in your little box. But let me help you. You're on your way to hell yourself. And if you don't repent and trust Christ as Savior, you will spend eternity in hell. I said eternity, forever. And one of the, sad, the, the, the saddest aspects of hell to me is the fact that hell is forever. There's no second chance. It's over. Once you go there, you can't get out. And there's no purgatory. There's no limbo. There's no in-between. It's over. So in light of that bad news, I have some good news for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son his name is Jesus, he was talking about himself, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God so loved the world, that means that God loves you. Even if you're proud and arrogant, God loves you. <clears throat> For God so loved the world, that he gave. He gave his only begotten son. His name is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins and for mine. Do you believe that today? Are you willing to believe that Jesus Christ humbled himself, God in the flesh, and suffered, bled, was humiliated, and died on the cross, was buried, and rose on the third day. John the Baptist, the prophet, 
the last prophet said, outside of Jesus Christ said, He is the Lamb of God. The sacrificial Lamb of God who has taken away the sin of the world. I believe sometimes prophets say things they don't even know what they're saying. They don't even understand it fully. And I don't know if John the Baptist understood it fully or not, but he said something when he said that. That, that, that was an amazing, an amazing, pivotal statement. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who has taken away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ is the sacrificial Lamb of God who has taken away the sin of the world. That includes your sin, sir, Mr. Pride, or Mr. Proud, and my sins. For we all have sin against God. And Jesus Christ took away our sin. And all we have to do is believe on him. That whosoever, that word whosoever means anybody at any time, believeth in him. The word believeth means to trust in, to have faith in, to rely on, to depend on. That's it. We must believe in Christ for our soul's salvation. And we need to pray and ask him to save our souls. For Romans 10, 9 and 13 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mr. Proud Miss Proud, you don't have to die and go to hell, but you will have to humble yourself and acknowledge that you are a sinner in need of a Savior, and you will have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose on the third day. <clears throat> and pray and ask him to save your soul. And he will save you. He has the power to do so. So if you're willing to believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose on the third day, I'm willing to lead you in what is called the sinner's prayer, where you have to humble yourself down and pray to God and ask God to have mercy upon your soul and forgive you of all of your sins. If you're not willing to humble yourself and do that, then I can't help you, and God won't help you. But if you're willing to humble yourself and admit that you are a sinner who needs to be saved and that you're going to believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ and pray and ask him to save you, then I can help you. So right now, repeat after me, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart, believing in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. Humble yourself down and believe in him. Believe that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose on the third day, and he will save your soul. Repeat after me, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner, and I admit that I have broken your Ten Commandments. I humble myself down before you and admit that I am a sinner. I have lied before. I admit that I have stolen things before. I humble myself down it that I have lusted in my heart after people and things before. I admit and I humble myself down and admit that I have dishonored and disobeyed and disrespected my parents. 
I humble myself down and admit that I have dishonored your name by taking your name in vain. Holy Father God, for Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy and grace upon my soul. And please forgive me of all of my sins. Because of your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. I now, with all of my heart, believe in the Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that He bled and died on the cross for my, my sins, was and rose on the third day. Lord Jesus Christ, I humble myself down before you, and I receive you into my heart and into my spirit. Please come into my heart and into my spirit and save my soul. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins of pride and other sins throughout my life that I have admitted to you that I have committed. Holy Father God, please help me to truly repent and turn from my evil life and to follow you in the new life, Lord Jesus. For it is in your name I pray. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you pray that prayer with me, and you meant it from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the Word of God, the Holy Bible, you are now saved from hell, and you are on your way to heaven by the grace of God. It's not because of any work that you have done, not because of joining a church, not because of giving money to the church, none of that prideful stuff simply because Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and rose on the third day, and you have believed on him. So welcome to the family of God, dear friend. I want to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and receiving him as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow, in your newfound faith in Christ Jesus, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my book. Download it free of charge. Read my book, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. You can download it free of charge because Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, may the Lord bless you and keep you, is my prayer. By the grace of God, if the Lord should tarry his coming and we live, I'll be doing the and giving the how to stay and survive the coronavirus plague briefing with more job opportunities, I believe. I think we have about four more and more ways on how to get, that is, jobs online, uh, remote jobs, uh, meaning you can do your job and get paid from home. And also how to, uh, I'll share two or three points with you on how to get online job or a remote job. Uh, if your job is not coming back fast enough, you still need to work, but you need to think differently and you need to do differently. We're living in a whole new world now, and the coronavirus plague has changed everything, and many, even secular people are saying, will change many things from time, uh, from now and time to come. So, Lord willing, 
I should be back up here by 10 o'clock. In 10 minutes, rather. I should be back in about 10 minutes to share that briefing with you. And hopefully, it will be brief. God bless you. Until then, let's stand for prayer.